All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show. And I'll do my NBA video uh, probably after I upload the SmackDown review while I'm watching the Dodgers game. Um, if you don't get to SmackDown here tonight, uh, the July 7th edition of WB SmackDown. Um, SmackDown really felt rushed tonight. Uh, SmackDown was really rushed like motherfucker tonight, at least in my opinion. And you can probably ask, uh, a lot of people have the same opinion. SmackDown felt was rushed. Like a bunch of these segments were just rushed tonight. Especially that women's segment, I thought there was I thought I thought there was gonna be more, but the time got rushed because the bloodline segment went by like 35 minutes or something. Um, it was only supposed to be like 20 minutes, but it went like 15 minutes over what it was supposed to. So I think a bunch of stuff had to get rushed with like AJ Styles and Karrion Cross going like three or four minutes. Uh, the women's segment, you had Oscar out there. Um, don't know what she was saying. Um, then, then we get a brawl. Charlotte Bianca come out there. Come out there. They brawl for a few minutes. Eo Sky teases the cash in. Oh, she wasn't going to be able to, to, be able to cash in tonight. I felt that was rushed too. Most, some stuff was rushed. The pacing was just so weird on this show because of the bloodline segment going 35 minutes. It's just the pacing of the show tonight. It's not. It wasn't bad because you had some good stuff. I, I, even though it was 35 minutes and it was long, but it was a really good segment for the Bloodline. Um, basically, uh, having a kayfabe injury for Jimmy Uso, and tip for, uh, and then he comes back at SummerSlam to help Jay Uso. So he'll be out for a few weeks, for about, probably a month until uh, SummerSlam. Um, Grayson Waller had a banger of a match with Edge. And he's had a good week having to get a, his early in his career getting a segment with John Cena at Money in the Bank. And then um, having a match with Edge. Yeah, that management's going to be really high on Grayson Waller. Even after this match, it was a banger. Banger of a match. So those were really good tonight. That obviously, the end was good with Roman Reigns and Sol Cole coming out there. Jay also said he was he was co coming back to he was a uh, arrived back at the arena. Obviously, beats Shell Sol Cole and Roman Reigns, and he basically issues a challenge a one on one match, one to whoop his, Roman Reigns' ass. So probably one on one at SummerSlam for the titles or for the title, the undisputed championship. I thought all that was good, but there was just some stuff that was rushed, like I was talking about. But there was one notable name, not on the show tonight, and I was I was very confused with this here. L.A. Knight was not on the show. He had a segment. He had a segment on the pre-show, and I'm really confused here. I don't get. I don't get it. You have all these short-ass segments, and you couldn't get this man three minutes or so of television time. Why was he not on the main show? Well, the Bloodline had a good 35-minute segment. I know people say, ooh, it was too long, but it was still really good for me. But come on. Yeah, remember when Triple H said great things come to those who wait? Yeah, great job, Triple H. Yeah, great things on the fucking pre-show. He was put on the pre-show, yeah. Great things come to those who wait. Give me a break. He's relegated to the pre-show. And this is all he got after losing money in the bank. Cut something else. Like, you didn't have to have Karrion Cross and AJ Styles. Look, I really like AJ, AJ Styles, but I don't care about freaking Karrion Cross. Cut that and put LA Knight on the show. He's so over, but put him on the freaking pre show, dude. <sighs> Triple H is freaking sick. Like, Vince is so freaking. Ugh. Freaking pre-show, man. That's another thing I didn't like. <sighs> yes, it is what it is. But it's just, it's... You can't have LA Knight not on the show. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's basically the main things I want to talk about. Uh, some of the good things and a thing I didn't like about Ellie not be, not being on the show, let's into it. So the Usos come out. And I was surprised we got the tribal 
uh, Court of Roman Reigns as the first thing to open the show. And Roman Reigns being the master manipulator that he is. I knew he wasn't going to give up being the tribal chief that easy. He puts the thing around Jey Uso's neck. He gets on his knees. He starts, he starts crying. But then he hits him with a low blow, which is pretty predictable what was going to happen. But that was still such a good segment to open the show. And then they beat the shit out of the Usos. He was in... Um, Solskjaer had Jey Uso on the ropes, making him watch. Uh, Roman Reigns beat up his brother. But that was just such a good show. Or su such a good open to the show. Roman Reigns was out there shedding tears on his hands and knees in front of Uso, only to low blow him and entice a complete meltdown of the tribal court. Roman Reigns is showing everyone he's he, he could be ready for Hollywood because he... His acting has got so much better as a heel. And Roman is legitimately an all-time great heel. Can't believe Vince wasted years of this man as a lame baby face. He's such a great all-time heel. This is probably the best 35 minutes of WWE TV that I've watched in a while. Like, I know it felt too long, but I loved it. Fantastic opening. But another thing I noticed was when uh, that red thing that they put over the neck, Soul's Co. was holding it, hasn't had to put it on Roman Reigns. So that's a little thing to watch. Um, next. And then they uh, stretchered J Jimmy Uso out. Obviously, Jay Uso was going to come back later in the night. So that pretty much set up what was going to happen in the main event. Next, we have Sheamus versus Austin Theory for the United States Championship. And Austin Theory retains. Like, what are we doing with Austin Theory? His reign has been completely boring. He hasn't done nothing since beating John Cena. Like, his reign has been boring. It's been a snooze fest. Like, I know, obviously, knew Sheamus wasn't going to take it, but what are we doing with Sheamus? Sheamus is so underrated, but Daddy B refuses to give him another title reign. Like, Pretty Deadly is dead. They're boring. Uh, Austin Theory, he's doing nothing with the top. Maybe he'll, maybe they're, he's, maybe they're gonna have LA Knight take it, which I would really like that. But somebody has state title off Austin Theory. I'm sorry, he's not cut as the U.S. champion. Reign of Terror continues. So we have Grayson, the Grayson Waller effect with Edge, and this is basically setting up for their match. Which was a banger of a match, by the way. So his first match on the main roster is against Edge. That's gonna be that was a banger. Um, next we had AJ Styles versus Karrion Cross, and AJ Styles beats Karrion Cross in three minutes. AJ Styles and Karrion Cross getting three minutes is criminal. Like, what are we doing here? Like I know, first segment was forty minutes. Something was gonna get cut, but. Oh even cut carrying Cross's entrance midway. Like, dude, I'm not sure what WWE's doing with AJ Styles. Like, I, I love the bloodline, but I'm sick of WWE only putting effort into the bloodline stuff and neglecting everything else, having to cut stuff short. I got love the bloodline. I love this segment tonight. It was fantastic. But the ro the rest of the roster deserves some love too. And they cut the women's match. Typical Vinny Mac. Oscar, Charlotte, and Bianca then brawled. Um, that segment was rushed, pretty much. Oscar was out there speaking, whatever. I don't know what she was saying. Here was Bianca. We get a brawl. Charlotte comes out there. And then Oscar's about to do something. Jump off the top rope. Even Sky hits her in the back with the briefcase. Bailey hits her finisher on it. She's probably about to cash in. Bianca pulls Bailey out of the ring. We knew AF Sky was going to be able to cash in. But it's interesting that they're teasing it. We'll see if it happens soon. But yeah, that was a rush, one of the rush things on this show, including AJ Styles and Karen Cross. Those two things probably got shortened down. Edge versus Grayson Waller. 
And I thought Grayson Waller looked fantastic tonight. It looked great, even in the, even defeat. I wonder how you guys feel about him losing his debut match against Edge. I don't think it's a big deal here tonight. Plus, Edge put him over with the you swam. And lots of greats have lost their first match. I think that uh, Grayson Waller could be a future world champion in the making. I think this loss to Edge is going to get him a lot more over than him be beating some lower lower card guy in a nothing match. I'm fine with it. If man management wasn't putting Grayson in the position that he is in right now, and he lost to Edge, then I would have a problem, but it's pretty clear they have big plans for Grayson Waller. I don't really think losing affects him all that much. This was a great showcase. First, he shared a promo with Cena. And then had a great match with Edge. He has a bright future in the company if Vince decides to book him correctly. And Edge doesn't bury people. He puts er he does everything he can to at least share the star power spotlight. Grayson's gonna be a big star. And I, everybody knew he could wrestle. It's just he the reason he was doing those Grayson Waller effects weekly was because he was injured. Because uh, he had a broken leg, he was still recovering. But now I think that he's now that he's fully recovered, people can really see how good he is in the ring. And people that haven't watched him before. And he's a better Miz. He can actually wrestle. So next, Paul Heyman, the wise man, he tells Roman Reigns, the Jey Uso's back in the building at Madison Square Garden, and Roman Reigns will be up there in the ring waiting for him, and Roman Reigns left Solo to get his ass beat by Jey Uso with a steel chair. That'll be something to look for, look back on for sure. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be a great moment when Solo Sokoa finally hits that Samoan spike on Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns left all alone. But that was an awesome ending, ending to SmackDown. My feel it's going to be predictable, though. I really want Jey Uso to win the titles. But I just have that feeling Roman Reigns is still going to retain. If he retains it, then I don't know who will beat him. If, 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 if Jey Uso doesn't do it, then maybe Cody's the last hope. But yeah, that was fun. But I bet Solo's gonna be pissed though. After Roman Reigns basically just left him in there to get beat up with a steel chair. But yeah, I'll give Smack now six out of ten. It was a decent show tonight. There was some stuff rushed that I really didn't like. I didn't care for the women's segment because it was really literally rushed. And then three minutes for AJ Styles and Karrion Cross. Other than that, I thought the show was fun. But it wasn't like great or bad. It was kind of just okay. But yeah, pretty decent show. That's all I'll say for this video though. So um, until next time, Apple Hot. Peace.